We have never given all thought to what lies behind them. We have never tried to penetrate them with our vision or our understanding. But there is where the Gulag country begins, right next to us, two yards away from us. In addition, we have failed to notice an enormous number of closely fitted, well-disguised doors and gates in these fences. All those gates were prepared for us, every last one. And all of a sudden the fateful gate swings quickly open, and four white male hands, unaccustomed to physical labor but nonetheless strong and tenacious, grab us by the leg, arm, collar, cap, ear, and drag us in like a sack, and the gate behind us, the gate to our past life, is slammed shut once and for all. That's all there is to it. You are arrested, and you'll find nothing better to respond with than a lamb-like bleat, me. What for? That's what arrest is. It's a blinding flash and a blow which shifts the present instantly into the past and the impossible into omnipotent actuality. That's all. And neither for the first hour nor for the first day will you be able to grasp anything else. Except that in your desperation the fake circus moon will blink at you, it's a mistake. They'll set things right. And everything which is by now comprised in the traditional, even literary, image of an arrest will pile up and take shape, not in your own disordered memory but in what your family and your neighbors in your apartment remember, the sharp nighttime ring or the rude knock at the door. The insolent entrance of the unwiped jackboots of the unsleeping state security operatives. The frightened and cowed civilian witness at their backs. And what function does this civilian witness serve? The victim doesn't even dare think about it and the operatives don't remember. Arrest I-5. Beer, but that's what the regulations call for, and so he has to sit there all night long and sign in the morning point one for the witness, jerk from his bed, it is torture too to go out night after night to help arrest his own neighbors and acquaintances. The traditional image of arrest is also trembling hands packing for the victim a change of underwear, a piece of soap, something to eat, and no one knows what is needed, what is permitted, what clothes are best to wear, and the security agents peep in. Corrupting and hurrying you, you don't need anything. They'll feed you there, it's warm there, it's all lies. They keep hurrying you to frighten you. The traditional image of arrest is also what happens afterward, when the poor victim has been taken away. It is an alien, brutal, and crushing force totally dominating the apartment for hours on. And, a breaking, ripping open, pulling from the walls, emptying things from wardrobes and desks onto the floor, shaking, dumping out, and ripping apart piling up mountains of litter on the floor. And the crunch of things being trampled beneath jackboots. And nothing is sacred in a search. During the arrest of the locomotive engineer in Ocean, a tiny coffin stood in his room containing the body of his newly dead child. The jurists dumped the child's body out of the coffin and searched it. They shake sick people out of their sick beds, and they unwind bandages to search beneath them. Point two. Dot. Nothing is so stupid as to be inadmissible during a search. For example, they seized from the antiquarian Chetburukhan, a certain number of pages of Saras decrees the decree on ending the war with Napoleon, on the formation of the Holy Alliance, and the proclamation of public prayers against cholera during the epidemic of 1830. From our greatest expert on Tibet, 
Boss Rakab, they confiscated ancient Tibetan manuscripts of great value, and it took the pupils of the deceased scholar 30 years to wrest them from the KGB. When the Orientalist next U.S. 1. The regulation, purposeless in itself, derives, N. M. recalls, from that strange time when the citizenry not only was supposed to but actually dared to verify the actions of the police. 2. When in 1937 they wiped out Dry, Kazakov's Institute, the Commission broke up the jars containing the lysales developed by him, even though patients who had been cured and others still being treated rushed around them, begging them to preserve the miraculous medicines. According to the official version, the lysates were supposed to be poisons. In that case, why should they not have been kept as material evidence? 6. I. The Gulag Archipelago. Arrested, they grabbed Tangut manuscripts and 25 years later the deceased victim was posthumously awarded a Lenin Prize for deciphering them. From Carter they took his archive of the Unice Ostiaks and vetoed the alphabet and vocabulary he had developed for this people and a small nationality was thereby left without any written language. It would take a long time to describe all this in educated speech, but there's a folk saying about the search which covers the subject. They are looking for something which was never put there. They carry off whatever they have seized, but sometimes they compel the arrested individual to carry it. Thus Nina Alexandrovna Palchinskaya hauled over her shoulder a bag filled with the papers and letters of her eternally busy and active husband, the late great Russian engineer, carrying it into their mob, once and for all, forever. For those left behind after the arrest there is the long tail end of a wrecked and devastated life, and the attempts to go and deliver food parcels. But from all the windows the answer comes in barking voices. Nobody here by that name. Never heard of him. Yes, and in the worst days in Leningrad it took five days of standing in crowded lines just to get to that window. And it may be only after half a year or a year that the arrested person responds at all. Or else the answer is tossed out deprived of the right to correspond. And that means once and for all. No right to correspondence, and that almost for certain means, has been shot. 3. That's how we picture arrest to ourselves. The kind of night arrest described is, in fact, a favorite, because it has important advantages. Everyone living in the apartment is thrown into a state of terror by the first knock at the door. The arrested person is Tom from the warmth of his bed. He is in a daze, half asleep, helpless, and his judgment is befogged. In a night arrest the state security men have a superiority in numbers. There are many of them, armed, against one person who hasn't. 3. In other words, we live in the cursed conditions in which a human being can disappear into the void and even his closest relatives, his mother and his wife, do not know for years what has become of him. Is that right? Or not? That is what Lenin wrote in 1910 in his obituary of Babushkin. But, let's speak frankly. Babushkin was transporting arms for an uprising, and was caught with them when he was shot. He knew what he was doing. You couldn't say that about helpless rabbits like us. Arrest. 7. Even finished buttoning his trousers. 
During the arrest and search it is highly improbable that a crowd of potential supporters will gather at the entrance. Be unhurried, step-by-step -step visits, first to one apartment, then to another, tomorrow to a third and a fourth, provide an opportunity for the security operations personnel to be deployed with the maximum efficiency and to imprison many more citizens of a given town than the police force itself. Numbers. In addition, there's an advantage to night arrests in that neither the people in neighboring apartment houses nor those on the city streets can see how many have been taken away. Arrests which frighten the closest neighbors are no event at all to those farther away. It's as if they had not taken place. Along that same asphalt ribbon on which the Black Maria's scurry at night, a tribe of youngsters strides by day with banners, flowers, and gay, fun. Troubled songs. But those who take, whose work consists solely of arrests, for whom the horror is boringly repetitive, have a much broader understanding of how arrests operate. They operate according to a large body of theory, and innocence must not lead one to ignore this. The science of arrest is an important segment of the course. On general penology and has been propped up with a substantial body of social theory. Arrests are classified according to various criteria. Nighttime and daytime, at home, at work, during a journey, first time arrests and repeats, individual and group arrests. Arrests are distinguished by the degree of surprise required, the amount of resistance expected even though in tens of millions of cases no resistance was expected and in fact there was none. Arrests are also differentiated by the thoroughness of the required search, or by instructions either to make out or not to. 4. And there is a separate science of searches too. I have had the chance to read a pamphlet on this subject for correspondence school law students in Alma Ata. Its author praises highly those police officials who in the course of their searches went so far as to turn over two tons of manure, eight cubic yards of firewood, or two loads of hay, clean the snow from an entire collective farm vegetable plot, dismantled brick ovens, dug up cesspools, checked out toilet bowls, looked into dog houses, chicken coops, bird houses, tore, apart mattresses, ripped adhesive tape off people's bodies and even tore out metal teeth in the search for microfilm. Students were advised to begin and to end with a body search during the course of the search be arrested. Person might have grabbed up something that had already been examined. They were also advised to return to the site of a search at a different time of day and carry out the search all over again. 8. I. The Gulag Archipelago. Make out an inventory of confiscated property or seal a room or apartment to arrest the wife after the husband and send the children to an orphanage or to send the rest of the family into exile, or to send the old folks to a labor camp too. No, no, arrests vary widely in form. In 1926 Irma Mendel, a Hungarian, obtained through the Comintum two front row tickets to the Bolshoi Theater. Interrogator Flegel was courting her at the time and she invited him to go with her. They sat through the show very affectionately, and when it was over he took her straight to the Lubyanka. And if on a flowering June day in 1927 on Kuznetsky Most, the plump, cheap, red-headed beauty Anna Skripnikova, who had just bought some navy blue material for a dress, climbed into a handsome cab with a young man about town, you can be sure it wasn't a lover's tryst at all, 
as the cabman understood very well and showed by his frown he knew the organs don't pay it was an arrest in just a moment they would turn on the lubyanka and enter the black maw of the gate